I did promise you also to see what to do with CAD underlays. Let me get that and start working on that for you. Okay, guys, so here is the example. When you have CAD that you're using as a background to trace and to draw things from, in this case, I have two examples. I have one that was done in AutoCAD and another one that was done in AutoCAD. These are two different buildings. This building here was done really well. Uh, the person using AutoCAD was really careful to make sure that all their lines were at 90 degree angles and done very well. However, when we come and look at this one here, uh, this person wasn't very careful and we can kind of see that the lines are not smooth and straight. Whenever you see a drawing in AutoCAD that doesn't have nice straight lines, they start coming in a little jagged looking. Uh, that's a good indicator that this is not square. Um, if we look over here at this person's lines, they're really nice, very clean, very straight, very easy to read. So I'm going to go ahead and show you an example of what happens when you have either one of these examples and how I go about placing a wall in these circumstances. So I'm going to start over here. I'm just going to uh, frame up this little room right here real quick, okay? I'm not worried about right now what the exact measurements or any of that is, okay? So I believe these walls are six inch right here. So I'm just gonna go to architectural, get myself a six inch wall right here. And then um, because it's a stud wall and it doesn't have any materials on it, I am concerned with its location line of placement. I'm gonna go ahead and say that core face exterior is what I'm interested in because I want my exterior to grow and my interior to, to change. So I'm gonna use pick line. I'm also going to set it to a height and I'm also gonna let it stop at level two. I don't really care what that number is right now because it'll vary per project. And then this core face extension, uh, core face exterior is the same thing I picked here. Okay, I pick it either place and I'm gonna allow them to join to begin with. So pick line is gonna be my tool. I'm not gonna draw this in. I'm pick lining because I have a reliable drawing, okay? So um, when I start placing these, I'm gonna start with this wall. Notice what Revit wants to do. It picks up on the total length of this wall because this line right here, this black line is not broken. It's continuous. And so in AutoCAD, it was drawn as one continuous line too. And so Revit still recognizes that continuous line. Now the dash line is telling me that it's going to expand from this line right here, this direction, uh, to give me the center of the wall I'm placing. So if I click right now, notice it did exactly as I predicted. All right now, what I can also see is that my flip arrows are in the wrong direction, and that is because I picked the wrong option here. I should have picked interior, not exterior, because I did place it on the interior to place it. All right, in this case, I'm going to control Z, allow my option to be what it is, and then hover on this side, click, and then it is doing exactly as it was supposed to do. The only thing that concerns me is that I may or may not have um, it grow in the right direction sometimes. So actually let's undo that and just simply flip this option to core face interior. I feel better about that. And that way I can hover here on this line. And then the blue dash line is telling me that that's gonna be the new wall I place as center line. So as you can see, that happens and my flip arrows in the direction that I want. So very happy with that. Now, when I come around the corner here, notice that the, the blue line doesn't continue all the way through, okay? That's because re the AutoCAD drawing has a short line right here. If I come to the other side of the wall, I have the same problem. So I wouldn't click here, click again, click again. Otherwise, I'm going to have separate walls. And I don't want separate walls. I want one continuous wall. So in this case, I would just go ahead and click this one, come over here to my trim command, and trim from here to here and it automatically will fill in that for me, okay? So wherever you see walls or, I'm sorry, openings or doors or windows, go ahead and let that wall be continuous if it's meant to be a continuous wall because it's not broken at the top of the bottom in this case, it's only an opening within the, that wall, right? So if I was standing in front of that wall, it would be continuous right now, all right? So <clears throat> in this case, it's great. Um, I could definitely put some dimensions on this wall and I, I could definitely see that, you know, this thing is gonna be something I could depend on. Let me get my align dimension here. And I could say that, you know, oh, okay, tab to get that face. And uh, you know what, the length of that is uh, 25 feet, 11 and 15, 16. Well, that probably means that the person drawing these CAD drawings are drawing two things that are at 90 degree angles. However, they weren't careful enough to make sure that their drawing was to 
round numbers. So they were probably rounding their drawings. And that's what's what, why you have this 15 16 showing up. Otherwise, this thing would actually say 26 feet right now. Okay. So let's go look at a bad example. A bad example is this one right here. This drawing right here, if I'm going to make another, uh, I have no idea what size wall this is supposed to be. So uh, let me try to take a dimension here. And I click and I click and it says eight inches. All right, let's use an eight inch wall then. Architectural wall. And let's switch from six to a generic eight. Great. I'm going to use my pick line again. And when I pick, it's going to place it. Notice I get a message. It says walls is slightly off axis and may cause inaccuracies. You betcha. Um, that means that your drawing is skewed. It's not actually uh, properly placed in here. And so should I take another dimension here and check its angle, chances are is that it's not going to be at 90 degrees. Okay. Here to here. And look at that. It's not 90 degrees. It's some funny number. And so that's very bad. And, you know, sometimes these drawings can be produced because somebody is just not paying attention or it came from a scan and somebody converted it. Um, also, it can happen if somebody had scanned a building and it took actual um, lines where it was and somebody converted it right then too. So, um, or just somebody really, really wasn't paying attention. And this is kind of the result, um, which is not a good thing. And so... What you might do in this case is find one common corner and just simply look at the dimensions and follow these dimensions and draw this out by hand, which in this case, I would just not put that wall right there, would delete those out. I'm just selecting the wall and pressing delete on my keyboard. There's also a delete key here. You also can right click and get a delete as well. So in this case, I would draw this uh, wall out. I would start from the face of this one and I would just keep note, looking to see if this wall continues. It does, it keeps on going, and it doesn't stop until I get about here-ish. Now, I'm not trying to snap to that corner. I'm just trying to get to that line right here so I know where that wall can then stop at. Now, because I'm in the thick lines, you don't see this very well. Let me get back into thin line right here, and uh, let me put myself into a uh, wireframe so you kind of see it. That if, it. if it looks like the colors are overwhelming you and you just simply cannot concentrate on what is yours and theirs, um, what I recommend is hitting escape a couple times, get out of that wall command and come to your visibility graphics, which is right here in your properties panel. Also, it is found in your visibility, um, sorry, in your view tab, which is right here. And then your visibility graphics buttons right here. And if you're a shortcut guy, a guy you can use VG or VV on your keyboard. All right. So, um, come to imported categories tab and look at your underlay. So in this case, I have two of them here. I wanna go ahead and make them half tone. Say, okay, and half tone will lighten them up for me. So that way I can distinguish the difference between mine and theirs more easily. Notice that my walls are dark, all right? Um, sometimes when you're working with AutoCAD backgrounds, it might be also useful to change your color of your background of your uh, environment. So go to your file, your options, and your user interface, I'm sorry, graphics. Go to the colors background here, change it from white to black is what I like to do, and hit OK. And so you're kind of mimicking that AutoCAD environment. Uh, also, it's a little easier on the eyes, but beware that sometimes when you switch it here, you can lose some line work. So don't do it very long. Do it only for this particular purpose, all right? And now that we've drew this line and we're starting to see these other lines are more skewed and it's more obvious now. Okay, so just be wary of this. And um, I would start just simply relying on these overall dimensions and these other numbers to start drawing a building such as this one as it is not straight. Okay, um, guys, I hope this helps out. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Again, I'm the Revit Tutor. All right, guys, take care.